Hey guys, Link here from Moto Fix. Today we're going to be doing a top end rebuild on a Gas Gas EC 350F. It's a 23 model. Uh, these bikes do approximately 1300 kilometres a week of hard riding. Um, we do tours up to Cape York in Queensland, um, so they get a fair workout. Here's some of the tools we're going to need for the job just basic hand tools, uh, most of you will have in your toolbox. We'll get straight into it. Um, first, up on the hoist, we might uh, drain the coolant out using the 8mm in the photo here. Um, crack that and then undo the radiator cap and uh, get ourselves a bottle so we can drain the coolant out into. Once we've drained the coolant, um, it's really important that we make sure we do that 8mm bolt back up straight away and it doesn't get forgotten so it leaks later on down the track. Uh, usually about a litre of fluid will come out when you're draining the coolant. Okay. So, yep, bolt back in, do it up. Okay. Next we'll move on to take the exhaust off. We'll move the springs there up on the header pipe there and the one uh, joining the muffler to the mid pipe couple 8 mils there and there's also a 10 mil on that mid pipe as well okay so moving on now to the uh, 8 mil for the muffler grab both of those ones out um, and take the muffler off undo the mid pipe which is a 10 mil on that one you can slip it all off, ready to go. Move on next to the engine mounts, uh, right and left. There are T45 Torx. And, and once we get them off, we'll undo the radiator hoses and off the water pump on this side as well. So they're usually a 6mm on the clamp. Getting the torques off now on the engine mounts. Most of this video will be sped up a little bit just so it's not too boring. I like to organise my parts in sandwich bags usually, so I put all the um, engine mounts, exhaust bolts, stuff like that, all in one bag, uh, and then I'll start. Once I disassemble the engine itself, I'll start with a different bag and go rocker cover, cam gear, all that sort of stuff in one bag so it's pretty easy to find and doesn't get misplaced. Okay, so here we're going to disconnect the coolant temp sensor, uh, undo the lower and upper subframe bolts which are T45s and um, undo the throttle body from the inlet manifold which is a, just a flat blade once we've done that we sort of pull the throttle body loose of the inlet manifold and pull the whole throttle body and airbox assembly back up with the subframe like and hinge off those top bolts and then it just makes it easier to get the head and that out of the road um, it's a little bit tight sometimes to get it off, but um, a bit of wiggling around you can sort of get it free and then just pull it all up out of the road. If you do it this way as well, you don't really need to disconnect your throttle cables or anything like that. Um, once you've got it sort of hinged up, just do one of your one or both of your upper subframe bolts tight again and it'll hold it up out of the road okay you can see the throttle bodies disconnected from the inlet manifold there out of the road give you a bit of room there um, next I just like to blow it off with a bit of compressed air before I start to take the rocker cover off just less debris goes into the cams um, just cut the cable ties holding the main wiring loom up because we will need to pull it sort of out to the side a bit it's really tight to get the head off these bikes with that loom fixed in place there um, a little trick I use 
is on the right hand side of the head stem uh, I pull the wiring loom back towards the back of the bike through and it gives you a lot more room with that wiring loom to sort of hang out to the left hand side of the bike then and get the cylinder head off um, once you, you're at that stage. So I just give the rock cover a little tap with the soft faced hammer just to sort of break the seal on the rubber to get it off. Um, next we're going to line up uh, top dead centre on the cams. Um, remove this 6mm hex head bolt here uh, and take the thick copper washer off the back of it uh, and then refit it in and screw it up loosely and then we'll set the cams up in the top dead center position um, which you'll see in a second here you see a red line on either cam and they're lining up exactly and they're parallel with the top of the cylinder head there and that puts you in the top dead center position they have to be pretty much perfect and then that bolt will screw back in firm and lock the crank in position okay once we've done that we're going to remove the cam chain tensioner uh, once the cam chain tensioner has been removed we can take the cams out and go from there uh, I believe it's 24 mil this one to undo it and there's a 5mm plug on the end which is a 5mm allen key. Once you undo this you're going to have to push an allen key back in like that to push the tensioner back and then you can get the um, whole lot out. Okay here we're removing the spark plug port uh, get it up out of the road then we can start undoing the cam bolts which are 10mm. Um, I like to use an electric ratchet on these, it just makes it a bit quicker. Uh, next we're going to get that uh, the cam stay off and what I usually do is just get a bit of a screwdriver and just put it under that oil jet, the brass oil jet there and just gently prise it up, you don't need much force and it comes off really easy. So now we lift the cams out of the road be careful not to drop the breather, plastic breather out of the inlet cam um, and now we'll start undoing the cylinder head bolts nuts, they are 13mm and there's a little 8mm head bolt on the right hand side of the cylinder head I usually work in a diagonal pattern when I'm undoing these um, they are pretty tight Once you've got all the cylinder head nuts and that undone, um, I like to get a magnetic rod and just come through and just lift the nuts out of the cylinder head with the magnetic rod. It just saves you dropping them down into the crankcase, down in through the time and chain port there. It saves you a headache down the track. Uh, once this bolt's undone, it's time to lift the cylinder head off. can be quite tight getting it out of there so just make sure you have that loom pulled out to the left hand side of the engine and just allow for it to sort of come up and out of the road a little bit easier um, I like to sort of pull it out to the right hand side of the engine I found that the easiest way uh, once that's off we can concentrate on get the cylinder off um, the gaskets and then we can take the piston off so there's nothing holding the cylinder on at this stage so it should just slide up out of the road. Like I said this bike's got nearly 22,000 k's on it and they're just starting to use a lot of oil probably sort of about 500 mil in a 13k, 100k ride so it's time for a new top end. So we'll just inspect the cylinder here for any visible uh, scores or lips on the cylinder. These cylinders have been pretty good. The last four or five I've done have all been about the same with the same K's on them. There's no lip, no scores, just a, a light sort of hone. Um, 
new piston rings, gap the rings, and uh, send them out again, pretty much. So I'm just honing here with a stone hone, not a flex hone. A little bit of lubricant. Um, just try to get that sort of right angle of cross hatch in it. Um, sort of hone it and clean it in between each hone just to see where I'm at with it. Once it has been honed properly, I generally take it out and give it a real good wash, degrease it, and scrub the cylinder with uh, detergent after it's been degreased, um, come in and sort of rinse it off and then dry it off with compressed air and oil it up and sort of clean it with a paper towel and just see how clean it is. Okay, it's a bit hard to see here, but that's about where we want to be with the home crosshatch. Uh, once that's done, and take it out, give a real nice scrub. Also like to uh, get a flat stone and sort of rub it on the top of the cylinder there to make sure there's clean any imperfections off or dags or anything and just make it so there's a nice flat surface for the gasket. Uh, once that's done, we'll rinse him off, a um, bit of air and ready to, um, we can stick the new rings in it and just sort of gap them and see where we're at there. Really important to give it a good clean, make sure everything is super clean when it goes back together. Okay, so we're checking the valve clearances here. Um, I've put the cams back in and with the cam stay and just a couple of bolts either side. We just check the valve clearances on the bench. Uh, these inlet clearances were way under spec, so they were a bit tight. Uh, the exhaust clearances were spot on, so they were okay. It just means we had to re shim the inlet valves, which is not too big a deal. Here I'm noting down the clearances on each of the valves. There's 0.063 for the left hand one and 0.051 for the right hand one. Uh, so now I'll pull the cams out and we can get those shims out and measure them up and go from there. So these shims are somewhere in between two and two and a half millimeters. So what I do is put the micrometer on two and a half millimeters and then screw it back in from there and take the measurement. Uh, 
once I've got the measurements, I'd like to write them down under the actual valve clearance and then we can work out the formula to find out new shim thickness. These ones are 2.17mm. Two, 2 so just looking at these exhaust clearances up the top, um, you'll see it's 0 0.178 and you can see the tolerance is 0 0.13 to 0 0.18 so it's right at the top end of that tolerance so they're pretty good. Next we're going to move down and work out our new shim thickness so we find B which is the recorded valve clearance of 0 0.63 so we go 0 0.63 minus our specified valve clearance which is 0 0.15 then we add the answer of that to the old shim thickness which is 2.17 millimeters So we worked it out quickly on the calculator. 0 0.063 minus 0 0.15 equals 0 0.087 and then we add that to 2.17 millimeters and it gives us our new shim thickness of 2.08. Okay, now what I do is I just get each individual shim and just wrap them up in tape and write exactly where they come from and put them in a bag so I can flip the head up and do a leak test on it, make sure the valves aren't leaking and then I know that each individual shim will go back in exactly where it needs to go, saving any confusion later on. What I'm doing here, I just fill a combustion chamber up with a bit of brake clean uh, and let it sit for five, ten minutes and just see if you get any leak through the valves in down in the exhaust port or the inlet port. Um, once you sort of keep checking it with a torch and you'll see it in the come through the port if it is leaking. If it doesn't leak what I usually do then is just clean the combustion chamber up, get any of the carbon out of it, um, run a stone on the surface and just give it a real good clean up so it's ready to get put back on. I'm just giving it a clean here with a wire brush, any carbon deposits off. You just be very careful not to get on the actual gasket mating surface with a wire brush. Uh, it's no good for it. Right, I'm just about to pull a piston out now, so I'll put a rag in around the 
base of the piston covering the crankcase um, so when I pull the circlip out it doesn't spring down into the crank and get lost there somewhere so it's just a precautionary measure really um, just makes it easier to pick it up if it does drop down in there it just falls on the rag so I push the piston pin out from the other side now and pop the piston off and I can fit check the little end check the big end bearing and just have a, have a look at it overall and make sure there's no movement there and no gouges or anything in the uh, small end of the conrod this one's pretty good they all have been everyone I've done has been pretty good in the last sort of five or six so I remove the base gasket clean it up a bit, a bit of brake clean the rag and a little wipe around, make sure there's no loose debris or anything there and um, oil that rod up and sort of get ready to fit the new piston. So on with the new base gasket now uh, next we'll fit a nice clean rag in around that con rod just to stop the new circlip going down into the crank and we'll go over and start check out uh, ring end gaps so I'll measure the bore first this bore is just over 90 mil so what general rule of thumb I work at is about 4 thou per inch of bore or per 25 mil of bore so I measured this one about 14 thou uh, and the ring gaps were pretty much spot on these Pro X kits They've been pretty good. So once that's done, fit the rings to the piston and lube them up and set the ends in the position as per the diagram. And then I like to fit the piston into the cylinder with the one circlip in usually on the cam chain side I put the circlip so you can work from the opposite side and feed the gudgeon pin and circlip in once it's sort of lowered down onto the bike So at this stage, pretty important to make sure you're comfortable and you've got a, the crankcase pretty much sealed with that rag to stop the circlip flying in there as you go to put it in. Uh, there's only a real small gap on these KDMs or gas gases to get the circlip in uh, on the gudgeon pin end. So you just got to be very careful and a bit of patience and it... Well, I try with pointy nose and I started off with the pointy nose pliers and then I just get a, a pick and just sort of push it in to make sure it locates and then it, it's it usually get it pretty easy most of the time. You just got to make sure you set yourself up right. Once it's in, pull the rag out uh, and then just slide it down. Make sure the cam chain guides and that are free and not catching up on the cylinder and then the whole cylinder should just slide down relatively easy and just seat and uh, and you can get ready to put your head gasket and dowels on and um, 
Get ready to fit the cylinder head. All bullshit aside, these heads aren't easy to fit. Usually they're, they're a real tight squeeze in between the uh, studs and the wiring loom on the bike. They're just, it's a tight fit, it's the way they're manufactured. Uh, you just have to persevere. I like to pull the loom sort of down through the frame on the right hand side and then pull it out to the side on the left. It just gives you a bit more space to work with. Um, once you got it on then, put your washers on, put the nuts on and uh, you can start to torque it up. Righto, cam time. Uh, with these engines, I always start with the inlet cam because it's on the opposite side of the cam chain tensioner. So we fit the inlet cam, make sure you've got the plastic breather in the left hand side or the back of the inlet cam in position and sitting in and then we line the red line or dot on the right hand side of the inlet cam up with the middle of the top of the cylinder head okay i'll show you a picture of that soon once i get the other cam in position so inlet cam first and then tension on the left hand side of the inlet cam on the cam chain and then we fit the exhaust cam and the red line goes on the left hand side of the exhaust cam and lines up with the red line on the inlet cam and the top of the cylinder head as shown.
here I'm setting the hydraulic cam chain tensioner and fit the o-ring on the outside and then the cam chain tensioner gets slid into the cylinder head and then the retainer goes in to hold it in position obviously the retainer has got a hole in the end of it once it's screwed in position locked off I get a 6mm hex head t-bar and just sort of push it in to set the cam chain tensioner once it's set you just I double check by sticking an allen key down and pushing back on the cam chain it just makes sure it's locked in position and tight and then you can fit the cover plug in the end and that's done next we're going to fit the rocker cover and on the rocker cover I just like to put a little bit of uh, three bond just on those little half circles just on the corner of each one of them it just allows it to seal a bit better Next we're going to remove the crank lock, so 6mm, undo this and we can refit the washer and screw it back in. Really important we remove this, you don't want to go try and start it with the crank lock in. Okay back in, just make sure you do it up tight. We can start to fit the air intake back onto the throttle body, just lowering the subframe. Don't forget to put your bolts back in, and don't forget to do up the upper subframe bolts as well that you'd loosened off to start with. And just tightening the intake clamp on the throttle body back up with a flat blade fit our radiator hoses back on I usually like to get the hose clamps and just give them a hit on the wire buff and a little bit of lubricant on them it just saves them jamming up Once they're all on, we can refill the coolant.
next we're going to refill the coolant uh, fit the radiator cap back on so the cooling system's done now and then we can get it putting our exhaust system back on and then we're getting pretty close to starting it up see if it'll go I might do an oil change on it first as well new filter So just dumping the oil here, uh, first I undo the magnetic plug and then this screen. Um, then we're going to remove and replace the oil filter, clean the screen and the magnetic plug, put it all back in, we can fill it back up with oil. And then we're ready for a test start. Righto, it's time to put the tank on. So we sit the tank on position, 
and we're going to connect a fuel pump wire on the right hand side of the tank and then we're going to connect the fuel hose on the left hand side of the tank and it should be pretty much ready to try and start I guess Next I just like to check it for leaks, uh, oil leaks, coolant leaks, make sure there's nothing coming out of it anywhere. Um, sometimes they will get a little bit of a oil leak on the left hand side of the rocker cover gasket. Once it warms up it seems to seal up and it's all good. So this one was pretty good. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, the bike runs sweet, there's no major leaks or anything. If you like the video, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, hit that like button, and I'll try to do a few different videos on maintenance, tyre changes, head stem bearings, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.